Hello everyone. I bet you're here for one reason. To get ENSP working on Windows 11 in 2024. Good luck. But first, what and why ENSP? Well, Huawei's ENSP or Enterprise Network Simulation Program is going to be quite useful for you to be able to virtualize and simulate Huawei's enterprise networking devices, which is going to be massively useful for you to study or learn how to work with their equipment. Or maybe you're planning to test their stuff out before you purchase and deploy it in your environment. But word of warning, ENSP has not been updated for several years, which is one of the reasons why it is so difficult to get working right now on a modern version of Windows, especially Windows 11. And at the moment, there's only VRP5 devices in ENSP and VRP8 if you install the missing images, which I have got in a separate video. Check the little pop out card now or wait for the end of the video where I will recommend that one to add the missing images. Now, before you rush off and start downloading ENSP from me, first of all, just check out your requirements are being met. The requirements aren't hectic, but still double check anyway. Make sure that you've got a dual core CPU and preferably that it's got virtualization support. Also, you need at least four gigabytes of RAM as the devices do run as virtual machines. If you have more RAM, that's fantastic. Also, check that you haven't got client Hyper-V installed. ENSP uses Oracle VirtualBox and if client Hyper-V is a installed feature on Windows, please make sure that it is removed. Otherwise, VirtualBox and Client Hyper-V will fight with each other. If you're using Windows 11 Home, you won't have Client Hyper-V, but if you're using Pro or Enterprise, Client Hyper-V is an option and it might be added. So just check it's not there. Also, ENSP uses an old version of Wireshark. So if you've got a newer version of Wireshark or something like Nmap installed on your computer, NPCAP would have come along as well. The old version of Wireshark that ENSP relies on still uses WinPCAP. So make sure you haven't got NPCAP installed, otherwise you're gonna have some weird Wireshark integration problems. And obviously you need to have downloaded some files from me. Check out the description below, but you'll have two things you wanna download from me. The ENSP installers and the installer for Oracle VirtualBox version 5.2.44. Now, with Windows 11, I need to make a special announcement here. First of all, I am going to use Windows 11 23H2. And Microsoft could always release a new build of Windows 11 that completely breaks ENSP. You might already have challenges getting ENSP working as it is. ENSP was released early in the Windows 10 lifecycle. So it runs smoother on the older versions of Windows 10, but it's a bit difficult to keep running with that. So you may run into some challenges getting ENSP up and running. But if you do, drop a comment down below. I'll see if I can give you some advice and some help. And I'm planning to bring a video out that will cover some of the basic troubleshooting and workarounds to any problems you encounter with ENSP running on a modern version of Windows. But Enough talking, let's get into it. All right, so I've already downloaded the files that I need. So first up, get the ENSP installers and unzip them. Once unzipped, you should have two folders. ENSP V100R003 something 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 and ENSP V100R 002. Start out with that V100R002. That is the version 1.2 installer. Double click it and it'll launch. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to install ENSP version 1.2 and it'll also bring along any supporting software it needs and then we'll do an update installation once we're done with that. Obviously when it asks for user ad access control to give admin rights just say yes. And then it's a fairly straightforward installation wizard. Next, I accept the agreement. Next, I'm fine with the installation directory. Next, start my new folder. That sounds fine to me. Next, yeah, desktop icon sounds nice. 
Now, it's going to bring along WinPCAP version 413, a fairly old version of Wireshark. Always forget what the version number is. And VirtualBox version 5.1.24. Please be aware that version is going to cause us some challenges. So we'll sort it out now. Now, next, install. And now we get comfortable. I will fast forward this for you guys so you don't have to sit through this long installation progress bar. All right, now the WinPCAP installer. Let's do this one quickly. And this one will be quick. Just click through, letting all the defaults be chosen and finish. Then comes Wireshark. Next. I agree. Next. 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 Don't worry about the WinPCAP version because we actually did a slightly newer version in the previous step already. Install. Also pretty quick as well. Once this is completed, just say next. Finish. And then the VirtualBox installer. Next, next, next. Yes, install. If it asks you, do you trust Oracle? Yeah, just, just trust them. It'll be fine. All right, I'm going to untick that start VirtualBox though. That's going to cause us some headaches if I'm not careful. So I'm going to untick that and say finish for now. And I also don't want to launch ENSP, nor do I want to see the update logs. I'm going to say finish. So now that I've done the version 1.2 install, I'm going to step back and I'm going to do the update to version 1.3. The version 1.3 installer does not bring along its supporting software. So you need to do the version 1.2 one that we just did now and then this one. Yes, when it asks you. Next, I accept. Next, next, next. Next, here it just says it detects that the supporting software it needs is already on the computer. So as long as it says it is detected that it is installed, it is detected that it is installed, you're fine. Next, install. And I will fast forward again so you don't have to sit through this, but it might take a little bit to do this. Okay, I do not want it to launch just yet, and I don't want to see the update log just yet. So let's just finish that close that now let's just see what happens if we try and run VirtualBox not ENSP VirtualBox and we get this error about this app is out of date and dangerous and you can either learn more or you can cancel so what you need to do is make sure you get that VirtualBox version 5.2.44 from me extract it all and we're going to update VirtualBox to this newer version just click it to install it. Next, next, next. Yes, install. Yes. So VirtualBox version 5.244 is the newest version of VirtualBox that ENSP does work with and Microsoft hasn't started blocking it on modern versions of Windows. So you're going to have to update to this, but you cannot go past version 5.244. So let's just finish that and See if VirtualBox will launch now. Yay, it launches. Please do not update it even if there are newer versions. And you should see a couple VMs already here. These VMs were created by ENSP and ENSP will use them as and when needed. So we don't have to touch them. In fact, just leave them be. That's just to make sure that they're there though. Now let's launch ENSP. It'll always want admin rights every time you launch it because it's doing cool things to your computer. Just say yes. And you're going to get these security prompts asking if you want to let ENSP through the firewall. Just allow it. What's one more big tech company spying on you now? And every time you launch ENSP, it's going to remind you to make sure it's being let through the firewall. If you are using another host-based firewall besides the Windows firewall, it might already auto detect and let ENSP through. It all depends on what you're using. But that is one of the troubleshooting things you might want to do if you've got a problem. But you should be greeted now by this welcome screen with a pretty little map and some files. What I want to do is click on the button in the top left corner that says new topo. And I want to make sure I'm in the router menu. So I'm going to click, click on this little router. And I'm going to go for an AR2220 because that's actually a nice device for a lot of things you will want to do. Then I'm going to click on the little switch icon just to the right of those routers and I'm going to grab an S5700. 
the CE 6800 and 12800 will not work until you add those missing images I mentioned earlier. Then there's a little antenna looking icon to the right. I will grab an AC6005 and an AP2050. Clicking and dragging them into the work area. Now I can click and drag to highlight and I can either say start devices with a green play button or I can right click on one of them once I've highlighted them and say start. Your choice which one you want to go with. And now we hold our breath. Might take a while to launch by the way. Depends on your computer, but that didn't take too long. Now, let's see if they're actually booting up and working. Ooh, almost forgot about that. First time you launch a switch, the switch will also ask if it can be let through the firewall. Just say allow. Now you can either right click on the device and say CLI, or you can click on this little button here that says open all CLI, and it opens all the command line interfaces for the devices in the topo that are currently running. As you can see, the switch seems to have already got up and running because we seem to have a little prompt that says Huawei. And if I press enter while in that window, I get a new line. Oh, what do you know? The router's up and running now as well. The access point should be next, and then eventually the access controller will come up. The access controller generally is one of the slower ones to start up. There we go. The access point is up now. Now, if you get these hashes continually, that's okay. That's the device booting up. But if you get to somewhere over here, the bottom of that window, and it's still doing hashes, you might have a problem. If you do, drop a comment and I'll see what I can do to help you. There we go. Now it says AC6005, doesn't say Huawei, but now I've got a prompt and if I press enter, it should work. Lovely. So as you can see, you can get ENSP up and running on Windows 11. However, you might not be as lucky as ENSP has not been updated by Huawei for quite a long time. So you might run into some weird challenges trying to get it up and running. But we will see what we can do for you. Otherwise though, that was that. Thanks for watching and if you want to see more content like this, subscribe. I'm also doing a lot of other cool things in IT and education in IT. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.